A foreland basin is a structural basin that develops adjacent and parallel to a mountain bill. Foreland basins form because the immense mass created by crustal thickening associated with the evolution of a mountain belt causes the lithosphere to bend. By a process known as lithospheric flexure, the width and depth of the foreland basin is determined by the flexural rigidity of the underlying lithosphere, and the characteristics of the mountain belt. The foreland basin receives sediment that is eroded off the adjacent mountain belt filling with thick sedimentary successions that thin away from the mountain bill. Foreland basins represent an end-member basin type, the other being rift basins. Space for sediments accommodation space is provided by loading and down flexure to form foreland basins, in contrast to rift basins, where accommodation space is generated by lithospheric extension. Types of foreland basin Foreland basins can be divided into two categories, peripheral foreland basins, which occur on the plate that is subducted or under thrust during plate collision examples include the North Alpine foreland basin of Europe or the Ganges Basin of Asia. Retroarch foreland basins, which occur on the plate that overrides during plate convergence or collision examples include the Andean Basins, or late Mesozoic to Cenozoic Rocky Mountain Basins of North America. Foreland Basin System DeSalles and Amp Giles provide a thorough definition of the Foreland Basin System. Foreland basin systems comprise three characteristic properties. An elongate region of potential sediment accommodation that forms on continental crust between a contractional orogenic belt and the adjacent cratin, mainly in response to geodynamic processes related to subduction and the resulting peripheral or retroarc fold thrust belt. It consists of four discrete depot zones, referred to as the wedge top, four deep, four bulge and back bulge depot zones. Which of these depot zones a sediment particle occupies depends on its location at the time of deposition, rather than its ultimate geometric relationship with the thrust belt. The longitudinal dimension of the foreland basin system is roughly equal to the length of the fold thrust belt and does not include sediment that spills into remnant ocean basins or continental rifts. Foreland Basin Systems Depot Zones The wedge top sits on top of the moving thrust sheets and contains all the sediments charging from the active tectonic thrust wedge. This is where piggyback basins form. The foredeep is the thickest sedimentary zone and thickens toward the orogen. Sediments are deposited via distal fluvial locustrine, deltaic, and marine depositional systems. The forebulge and back bulge of the thinnest and most distal zones and are not always present. When present, they are defined by regional unconformities as well as aeolian and shallow marine deposits. Sedimentation is most rapid near the moving thrust sheet. Sediment transport within the foredeep is generally parallel to the strike of the thrust fault and basin axis. Plate motion and seismicity. The motion of the adjacent plates of the foreland basin can be determined by studying the active deformation zone with which it is connected. Today GPS measurements provide the rate at which one plate is moving relative to another. It is also important to consider that present-day kinematics are unlikely to be the same as when deformation began. Thus, it is crucial to consider non-GPS models to determine the long-term evolution of continental collisions and in how it helped develop the adjacent foreland basins. Comparing both modern GPS and non-GPS models allows deformation rates to be calculated. Comparing these numbers to the geologic regime helps constrain the number of probable models as well as which model is more geologically accurate. Within a specific region, seismicity determines where active zones of seismic activity occur as well as measure the total fault displacements and the timing of the onset of deformation.
formation of basins. Foreland basins form because as the mountain belt grows, it exerts a significant mass on the Earth's crust which causes it to bend, or flex, downwards. This occurs so that the weight of the mountain belt can be compensated by isostasy at the upflex of the fore bulge. The plate tectonic evolution of a peripheral foreland basin involves three general stages. First, the passive margin stage with orogenic loading of previously stretched continental margin during the early stages of convergence. Second, the early convergence stage defined by deep water conditions. And lastly, a later convergence stage during which a subaerial wedge is flanked with terrestrial or shallow marine foreland basins. The temperature underneath the orogen is much higher and weakens the lithosphere. Thus, the thrust belt is mobile and the foreland basin system becomes deformed over time. Syntectonic unconformities demonstrate simultaneous subsidence and tectonic activity. Foreland basins are filled with sediments which erode from the adjacent mountain belt. In the early stages, the foreland basin is said to be underfill. During this stage, deep water and commonly marine sediments, known as flush, are deposited. Eventually, the basin becomes completely fill. At this point, the basin enters the overfilled stage and deposition of terrestrial clastic sediments occurs. These are known as molasse. Sediment fill within the fore deep acts as an additional load on the continental lithosphere. Lithospheric behavior, although the degree to which the lithosphere relaxes over time is still controversial, most workers accept an elastic viscoelastic rheology to describe the lithospheric deformation of the foreland basin. Allen and Amp Allen describe a moving load system, one in which the deflection moves as a wave through the foreland plate before the load system. The deflection shape is commonly described as an asymmetric low close to the load along the foreland and a broader uplifted deflection along the fore bulge. The transport rate of flux of erosion, as well as sedimentation, is a function of topographic relief. For the loading model, the lithosphere is initially stiff, with the basin broad and shallow. Relaxation of the lithosphere allows subsidence near the thrust narrowing of basin, a fore bulge toward thrust. During times of thrust the lithosphere is stiff and the fore bulge broadens. The timing of the thrust deformation is opposite that of the relaxing of the lithosphere. The bending of the lithosphere under the orogenic load controls the drainage pattern of the foreland basin. The flexural tilting of the basin and the sediment supply from the orogen. Lithospheric strength envelopes. Strength envelopes indicate that the rheological structure of the lithosphere underneath the foreland and the origin are very different. The foreland basin typically shows a thermal and rheological structure similar to a rifted continental margin with three brittle layers above three ductile layers. The temperature underneath the origin is much higher and thus greatly weakens the lithosphere. According to Joe A. Al, under compressional stress the lithosphere beneath the mountain range becomes ductile almost entirely, except a thin brittle layer near the surface and perhaps a thin brittle layer in the uppermost mantle. Quote, this lithospheric weakening underneath the orogenic belt may in part cause the regional lithospheric flexure behavior. Thermal history. Foreland basins are considered to be hypothermal basins with low geothermal gradient and heat flow. Heat flow values average between 1 and 2 HFU. Rapid subsidence may be responsible for these low values. Over time sedimentary layers become buried and lose porosity. This can be due to sediment compaction of the physical or chemical changes, such as pressure or cementation. Thermal maturation of sediments is a factor of temperature and time and occurs at shallower depths due to past heat redistribution of migrating brines. Vitrinite reflectance, which typically demonstrates an exponential evolution of organic matter as a function of time, is the best organic indicator for thermal maturation. 
radiation. Studies have shown that present-day thermal measurements of heat flow and geothermal gradients closely correspond to a regime's tectonic origin and development as well as the lithospheric mechanics. Fluid migration. Migrating fluids originate from the sediments of the fallen basin and migrate in response to deformation. As a result, brine can migrate over great distances. Evidence of long-range migration includes 1. Correlation of petroleum to distant source rocks 2. Ore bodies deposited from metal-bearing brines 3. Anomalous thermal histories for shallow sediments 4. Regional potassium metasomatism 5. Epigenetic dolomitomance in ore bodies and deep aquifers Fluid source. Fluids carrying heat, minerals, and petroleum have a vast impact on the tectonic regime within the fallen basin. Before deformation, sediment layers are porous and full of fluids, such as water and hydrated minerals. Once these sediments are buried and compacted, the pores become smaller and some of the fluids, about one-third, leave the pores. This fluid has to go somewhere. Within the fallen basin, these fluids potentially can heat and mineralize materials, as well as mix with the local hydrostatic head. Major driving force for fluid migration Orogen topography is the major driving force of fluid migration. The heat from the lower crust moves via conduction and groundwater advection. Local hydrothermal areas occur when deep fluid flow moves very quickly. This can also explain very high temperatures at shallow depths. Other minor constraints include tectonic compression, thrusting, and sediment compaction. These are considered minor because they are limited by the slow rates of tectonic deformation, lithology, and depositional rates, on the order of 0 to 10 cm year minus 1, but more likely closer to 1 or less than 1 cm year minus 1. Overpressured zones might allow for fast migration. When one kilometer or more of shaley sediments accumulate per one million year, Bethke and Amp Marshak state that groundwater that recharges at high elevation migrates through the subsurface in response to its high potential energy toward areas where the water table is lower. Hydrocarbon migration. Bethke and Amp Marshak explain that petroleum migrates not only in response to the hydrodynamic forces that drive groundwater flow, but to the buoyancy and capillary effects of the petroleum moving through microscopic pores. Migration patterns flow away from the orogenic belt and into the cratonic interior. Frequently, natural gas is found closer to the orogen and oil is found further away. Modern fallen basin systems. Europe North Alpine Basin Peripheral Fallen Basin to the north of the Alps, in Austria, Switzerland, Germany and France. Formed during the Cenozoic collision of Eurasia and Africa complications arise in the formation of the Rhine Graben. Po Basin Retro Fallen Basin to the south of the Alps, in northern Italy. Ebro Basin Peripheral Fallen Basin to the south of the Pyrenees in northern Spain. Substantial deformation of the fallen basin has occurred in the north, exemplified by the fallen fold thrust belt in the western Catalan province. The basin is well known for the spectacular exposures of sin and post-tectonic sediment strata due to the peculiar drainage evolution of the basin. Guadalquivir Basin formed during the Neogene north of the Betic Cordillera on a Hercinian basement. Aquitaine Basin Retro Fallen Basin to the north of the Pyrenees in southern France. Asia Ganges Basin Pro Fallen to the south of the Himalaya in northern India and Pakistan, began to form 65 million years ago during the collision of India and Eurasia filled with a sedimentary succession more than 12 kilometers thick. 
northern Taram Basin Pro fallen to the south of the Tian Shan formed initially during the late Paleozoic, during the Carboniferous and Devonian, rejuvenated during the Cenozoic as a result of far-field stress associated with the India-Eurasia collision and the renewed uplift of the Tian Shan. Thickest sedimentary section is beneath Kashga, where Cenozoic sediment is more than 10,000 meters thick. Southern Yunga Basin retro fallen to the north of the Tian Shan formed initially during the late Paleozoic and rejuvenated during the Cenozoic. Thickest sedimentary section is west of Urumqi, where Mesozoic sediment is more than 8,000 meters thick. Middle East Persian Gulf fallen to the west of the Zagros Mountains underfilled stage. Terrestrial part of the basin covers parts of Iraq and Kuwait. North America Western Canadian sedimentary basin fallen to the east of the Rocky Mountains, Alberta. South America Andean fallen to basins Orient. Te Basin Noi Quen Basin Magdalene's Basin Ancient Fallen Basin Systems Europe Windermere Supergroup Fallen Basin Caused by Subduction of Ipatus Ocean under Avalonia or Division to Silurian in Age Underlies Most of England Asia Longman Shan Basin Fallen to the East of the Longman Shan Mountains Peak Evolution During the Triassic to Jurassic Urals fallen fallen to the west of the Ural Mountains, in Russia formed during the Paleozoic. North America Western Interior Basin fallen to the east of the Severe Orogenic Belt covered much of central and eastern Utah. Evolved during the Cretaceous deepest parts of the basin filled with the Mancos Shale. Appalachian Basin fallen to the west of the Appalachian Mountains, in eastern United States. Bendage, Fort Worth Basin Pro fallen to the east of the Washita Orogenic Belt formed during the Paleozoic. 